Well, May is Mental Health Month, a tradition started by Mental Health America in 1949. The nonprofit works not just during May, but all year long to improve access to screenings for mental illness and treatment of resources to improve your mental wellness. I sat down with Mental Health America President and CEO Schroeder Stribling to talk about the latest research from their prevention and screening program and ways that we can all improve our mental health. This year, what we published was a report detailing what we learned from the 6.3 million people who came to take a mental health self-test in 2022. And without doubt, the major headline is our concern for youth. About three quarters of those screeners were our ages 24 and younger. Many of them took the depression screen, which is one of our most popular screens. And of those youth who took a depression screen, about half of them said that they are coping with thoughts of suicide on a frequent basis. So this gives us a real sense of uh, alarm. It's consistent with other reports we've seen and a reason to keep our focus in on youth. Yeah, a real, real urgent issue here uh, for, for young people in America. What are some of the biggest contributing factors? You know, we have a lot of, of uh, kids and teens saying that they're experiencing depression. What might be the cause of that? Well, you're asking the million dollar question and something that people are talking about a lot these days, which is what are the root causes? What's really going on that's causing so much distress amongst our young people? And I think one thing we can Perhaps the only thing we can say with certainty is that it's more, there's more than one variable involved. We certainly know the pandemic acted as an accelerant for all mental health stressors, and it placed additional stress on youth as well as it did on adults. So that is, uh, and it disrupted life and developmental cycles for youth and family life, et cetera. So no doubt that's one of the causes. There's a lot of discussion about social media and technology influencing this as well. What I can tell you when we ask our screeners at the end of the screen to tell us what are those things that are contributing most to their concerns about their own mental health, the top three things that they cite are concerns about body image, self-image, and relationships. So these are, of course, really speak to um, youth in particular and tell us, give us a little bit of a clue as to what's behind or underneath their feelings. Are there any factors, uh, you know, contributing factors or, or aggravating factors that that surprise you that people might be surprised to learn, you know, parts of our lives that can have an impact on our mental health? I think one of the things that surprised us this year in the data was that we added a, a, a screen about ADHD. So attention uh, difficulties. And what we found was added it about halfway through the year. And very quickly, it became one of the most popular screens right up there with depression and anxiety, which are the ones that are most frequently taken. So first of all, that tells us that an awful lot of people are struggling with staying focused, feeling like they can finish, complete a task, maintain their concentration. The one of the other interesting things about this is that whereas the other results skew more toward concerns about youth, we find that there are a great number of adults who are taking the screen about for ADHD. So a lot of adults who are experiencing these attentional difficulties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we talk about struggles with mental health, I think the conversation can very quickly go towards medication and therapy, both very, very useful tools. But what are some of the other things that we can be looking at for ways to better cope and manage anxiety, depression, stress in our lives? That's a great question. And one of the reasons it's a great question is that right now we have more people who are in need than can immediately access services. And people may have to wait to access services or may have to 
work their way around to navigate to actual services. So knowing what we can do for ourselves, but also knowing what we can do for each other, how we can care for our loved ones and our friends and our neighbors. There is a, a lot that we can do. Our theme for Mental Health Month this year is look around and look within. So part of that speaks to what can we do with the environment around us to create a mentally healthy environment, whether that's our neighborhood and our community and what we we might do uh, collectively there, or whether that's even just how we set up our our room, our bedroom, or our apartment, uh, or getting time outside, or listening to music. These are all things that we can do that affect our mental health, and we have good research to demonstrate that. Um, and also, just checking in with our loved ones is something else that we can do. It's good for them, and it's good for us, too. Shorter, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's a great conversation, uh, one to have not only during the month of May, but year round. Year round. Thank you so much. Have a good day. And to learn more and take your own mental health, mental health self-assessment, you can visit mhanational.org. And if you or someone you know is experiencing a mental health crisis, you can always call the National Crisis Line. That number is 988.